Hey everyone, uh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm, um, I'm pet sitting. Uh, anyway, I just got out of seeing Tomorrowland. Um, here's the review as I said there was going to be. and uh, uh, this, this movie was kind of a mixed bag. It, it wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, there, there were some pretty glaring problems. Uh, hey, I'll touch on the good parts first. Uh, Great art direction, um, really good set design and everything. Um, even during the non-Tomorrowland segments, there was a lot of uh, really good parts of that. Um, some of the performances were pretty good. Uh, George Clooney was good. Hugh Laurie was pretty good. Um, the actress who played the little girl, uh, I think her, the character's name was Athena. I think the actress's name is, uh, it's Rafe something. I can't remember her last name. I want to say it's Thompson, but I may be wrong on that. Uh, she was pretty good. Um, uh, it was a good story. I liked some of the themes about, uh, you know, trying to look to the future with wonder and not always um, such a, such bitterness. Um, a bit of a spoiler here. Um, one of the funny things is, uh, in Tomorrowland, they were able to predict the end of the world, and, you know, they couldn't go, it's like, well, like, you can't go to politicians, you can't go to the news or anything, because they're not going to see, they're only going to see what matters most to them, or they're just going to see ratings, or, and no one's going to believe you, and that sort of thing. So it's like, we're going to beam it directly into people's heads, and um, because they basically beamed it directly into people's heads, the end of the world, it basically caused uh, post-apocalyptic fiction to, uh, exactly, you turn it into books, you turn it into movies, you turn it into video games, you turn it into comics. Yeah, you didn't care, you actually liked the idea of the world ending. Um, uh, like I said, that was pretty good. Um, unfortunately, uh, there, like I said, there were some pretty major drawbacks, too. Uh, one of the things... Uh, for a movie called Tomorrowland, we don't spend a lot of time in Tomorrowland. In fact, I would say about three quarters of this movie is not spent in Tomorrowland. Hi, Saxon. Uh, as I was saying, about three quarters or so of this movie is not spent in Tomorrowland. In fact, uh, not counting uh, those little flash forward things where she picks up the pin, I would say they spend all of about 20 minutes in Tomorrowland. Uh, some of the other problems I had, uh, um, the main actress, uh, Britt Robertson, uh, she wasn't bad, she's kind of cute. Uh, her character's supposed to be 17, I don't buy that that actress is 17 years old. Uh, you know, and I'm normally the guy who defends the whole, you have to cast, uh, they cast uh, actors in their 20s to play teenagers uh, because of the child labor laws in Hollywood. Hey, I, I normally defend that, but this, uh, this, this didn't work at all. Um, you could kind of, well, there was a, I would say there was a twist um, with the little girl. Um, I'm not going to say too much about what that twist is, but it's it's made it very early on in the movie, but you can also kind of tell what the other ad of the twist is. Um, and, uh, you know, the other funny thing I would say is this is basically the exact same plot as the animated movie Meet the Robinsons. Coincidentally, also put, made by Disney. Uh, except, I think um, Meet the Robinsons had a much more positive message. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry for the ums and ahs. This isn't scripted. Uh, like I said, basically the same thing as Meet the Robinsons. Uh, okay, where else was I? Uh, oh, um, another plot point in the movie that just, it seems to be this glaring omission, like, I really don't want to say they were sequel baiting, but I'm guessing they were sequel baiting on this. Um, when uh, the main girl, um, her last name's Newton, is it Kathy Newton? Yeah. Not exactly the greatest uh, names, <laughs> memories in the way, <laughs> memorable named characters in the, sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to say, her, yeah, her, the Newton girl gets the pin. And the reason she gets the pin is because uh, the young girl, Athena, gives it to her. And 
while she's investigating whether or not she's worthy of getting the pin, she does this scan and it says DNA match. It's never answered whose DNA she has, unless it was somehow answered in the, you know, four or so minutes I got up to go to the bathroom, which um, didn't seem to happen too much, <laughs> which I don't think much happened. Um, at the, yeah, there was, there's another part of that too I'll touch on uh, when I explain this. Uh, like I said, DNA match. DNA match to whom? Uh, probably they're setting that up for the sequel, although I'm guessing they were meant to say she's probably a descendant of Sir Isaac Newton, because there's a lot of sort of uh, science-y things uh, mentioned throughout this whole thing, and uh, through a whole film. Like I said, I'm guessing they're trying to say she was a descendant of Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, the problem is, is the whole people behind Tomorrowland, like the first four or five guys who were developing it, it's revealed it's uh, Thomas Edison, Jules Verne, uh, Eiffel, the guy who built the Eiffel Tower, and Nikolai Tesla. Uh, that's you're, you're a little uh, off on the Sir Isaac Newton there. I f you're off by a few hundred years if you're trying to put him into that grouping. Uh, <laughs> um, but overall, though, it's not, like I said, although I had those problems, it wasn't entirely a bad time at the movies. Um, Anyway, well, I guess I should probably touch on some of the trailers I saw. I don't know if I can memorize them all because uh, most of them are pretty forget forgettable. Uh, the most noteworthy was um, Star Wars Force Awakens. It was nice to actually see that on the big screen. Uh, no Ant-Man trailer. Uh, um, uh, the Pixar movie that's coming out uh, is, is Little Voices about uh, the adventures of the personality traits in the little girl's brain. That, you know, that, that doesn't look too bad. Um, we have Max, which is a movie about a dog that was serving in the military, and uh, he basically has to be taken care of by the owner of, well, the partner he was assigned to in the military dies, and basically the family of that partner uh, takes him in, and there's something else with some other guy in the group who may be a traitor of some kind. I did completely blanked on it. Um... And there's some uh, concert documentary on um, some Christian rock band from Australia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, there was Underdogs, which is a, an animated movie about uh, foosball table figures who come to life and uh, help a town get a soccer team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> foosball, ta figures, foosball table figures coming to life. Not as great a concept as that sounds. Oh, uh, I want to say there was one more. Now, what was... Oh, um... Uh, Paper Towns, uh, from the guy who made Fault in Our Stars. Uh, yeah, if you liked Fault in Our Stars, you'll probably like that movie. Um, I didn't hate Fault in Our Stars. That was an okay movie, but, uh... You know, it's not something I'm going to just run to and see. And, uh, as for Tomorrowland, you... Uh, I would say, I don't want to quite give it a C, because I don't think it was that bad. I don't want to give it that low a grade, but I can't really give it a B either. I mean, uh, give it a B minus, C plus, right on the borderline there. Um, don't, I, I wouldn't recommend going to see this in the theaters, really. There's no real impetus to go do that. Uh, I'd say wait for On Demand or Blu-ray or Netflix or something like that. Um, whatever you choose to watch on, you know, when you watch a movie at your home or on your computer. Um, so, uh, in a couple days, the random trade review for uh, Avengers Under Siege will be up. See you then. Bye.
Oh, and uh, if you're wondering whose pet it is I'm taking care of, it's uh, this guy. And somewhere in here there is a cat. Saxon. Huh? Mm-hmm.